It was a beautiful day and Miffy was riding her scooter. Snuffy came running up. Hello, Snuffy. Tomorrow is my birthday and I'm going to invite my friends to a party. Will you come too? Snuffy barked happily. She certainly would. Miffy scooted along. When she arrived at Poppy Pig's house, Poppy and Grunty were working in the garden. Hello, said Miffy. Will you and Grunty come to my birthday party tomorrow? We're going camping on the hill. I'd love to come, Miffy, said Poppy. Grunty wants to come too. That's wonderful, Miffy said. I have to go now because I want to invite Boris and Barbara as well. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Miffy, said Poppy and Grunty. It was a long ride to Boris and Barbara's house. And when Miffy arrived, she didn't see Boris or Barbara. Boris! Barbara! called Miffy. Over here, she heard. And there she spotted them, through the trees. They were picking wild strawberries. Hello, Boris. Hello, Barbara, said Miffy. I'd like to invite you to my birthday party tomorrow. That sounds great, Miffy, answered Boris. And we love parties, said Barbara. We'll be there. See you tomorrow then, said Miffy. And she scooted on home, all excited about her birthday just one night away. That night, when Miffy went to bed, Father Bunny said, Tomorrow will be a big day. Sleep tight, Miffy. But Miffy couldn't sleep. Teddy, can you smell something? She whispered. It smells delicious and it's making me feel hungry. She got out of bed and went into the kitchen where Mother Bunny was baking something in the oven. Mother, she said, I can't sleep because the smell is making me hungry. What are you baking? It's a surprise for your birthday, Miffy. I think that you can't sleep because you're too excited about tomorrow. Here's some hot milk to help you fall asleep. Good night, Miffy. Sleep well. This time, Miffy soon fell asleep. When she woke up, it was light outside. Teddy! Teddy! Wake up! Today it's my birthday, said Miffy. She went to wake up her parents. Mother! Mother, wake up! She whispered. It's my birthday today. Oh, Miffy, said Mother Bunny sleepily. It's only six o'clock. It's still too early. I'll take you back to bed, said Father Bunny. It gets light outside much earlier in the summer, Miffy, but you must sleep a little longer. Miffy was feeling tired, and she could hardly keep her eyes open. Next time you wake up, the sun will be shining and we can start celebrating your birthday. Sleep well, Miffy. Today was Miffy's birthday, so she was wearing her birthday dress. Hooray! There was a delicious carrot cake on the table and a special birthday chair. She noticed a drawing on the seat. What's this? 
she asked. I know, it's a clue. I have to look for my birthday present under my bed. How exciting! And she hurried to her room. There it was. Miffy opened the package carefully and gasped. Oh, what a beautiful necklace! Thank you very much. Then she saw another drawing in the box. Now I have to look in the kitchen cupboard. There she found her second package and opened it. A book about the moon and the stars. How wonderful, she said. Thank you, father and mother. They're lovely presents. Just then, they heard barking outside. I think Snuffy also has a present for you, Miffy, said Father Bunny. Hello, Snuffy, said Miffy. How nice of you to visit me on my birthday. Snuffy barked again. What is it? asked Miffy. And then she saw the present in the doghouse. And she opened it. It's a ball. Thank you, Snuffy. Bye, Snuffy. I have to go to school now. We can play with it later. Father Bunny drove Miffy to school and they took the carrot cake with them. At break, Miffy and Melanie had built a castle in the sandbox. We are the king and queen and this is our castle, said Melanie. Yes, said Miffy, and I am the queen with my beautiful necklace. She felt her neck. Oh no, she gasped. It's gone. I must have lost it. She looked around in the sandbox, but she couldn't see it. So she started digging in the sand. Melanie helped her. Soon they had dug up all the sand from the sandbox. But they still hadn't found Miffy's necklace. Just then the teacher walked by. Miffy? Melanie? What are you two doing? she asked. Miffy was crying. I've lost my new necklace, she said. Oh dear. But didn't you take it off to show it to me earlier? Perhaps it's still lying in the classroom. Miffy quickly went back inside to look. And there it was. She ran outside again. I found it, she called out. I'm glad, Miffy, said the teacher. Now let's all help to put the sand back in the sandbox. And then it was time to celebrate Miffy's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miffy. Happy birthday. Miffy was having her birthday party. She had invited her friends to go camping on the hill. And now she was helping Father Bunny to pack the car. I think that's everything, he said, as he put the blanket in the car. Mother Bunny came out of the house. We mustn't forget the picnic basket, she said. Now we're ready to go. They drove through the meadows and up the hill. Boris, Barbara and Melanie were already at the camping place to welcome them. Happy birthday, Miffy, they cheered. Then Poppy Pig and Grunty arrived with Snuffy. 
Happy birthday, Miffy, they said. Welcome to my birthday party, said Miffy. I'm so happy you all came. Now we'll put up our tent, said Father Bunny. When they had finished, Mother Bunny opened the picnic basket. Time for lemonade and birthday cake, she said. Hooray! cheered everybody. I'll leave one piece of cake, said Mother Bunny. You never know who else might come. Suddenly, Miffy heard a strange sound coming from the sky. She looked up. Look, she shouted, a plane! Up in the sky, they could see a small plane approaching. It's Uncle in his plane, cried Mother Bunny. Miffy waved. Hello, she shouted. As the plane flew by, they could see a bright flag tied behind it. Uncle is sending you a birthday greeting, said Mother Bunny. What a lovely surprise, said Miffy. Will he come to my party too? she asked. It might be difficult for him to land here, but who knows? Then Boris had a surprise for Miffy. This morning I laid a trail. Follow the coloured arrows and you'll find a big surprise. They looked around. I can see a yellow one, said Grunty. Miffy, Melanie and Boris followed her down the hill. Then they saw a red arrow. It looks as if we'll have to go through the woods, said Miffy. The next arrow was difficult to spot. There, said Miffy. It was hard to find it in the woods because it's brown. When they followed the brown arrow, they came to an open field and there they saw... Uncle, shouted Miffy. You came! Happy birthday, Miffy, said Uncle. And here's your birthday present. Miffy opened the package carefully. What is it? she asked. It's a telescope, so you can look really far, said Uncle. Tonight I'll stay up late, so we can look at the stars together, said Miffy. Thank you, Uncle. I am happy you came. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miffy. Happy birthday to you. On the hill, Miffy was celebrating her birthday. A new guest has arrived, called Miffy. Welcome to the party, said Mother Bunny. Look what Uncle gave me, said Miffy. It's a telescope to look at the stars, said Uncle. Please may I stay up late tonight to look at the stars, asked Miffy. Yes, as it's your birthday, you may stay up late for once said Mother Bunny. Hooray! It will take a long time to get dark tonight, Miffy, said Uncle, because it's midsummer's night. What is that? asked Grunty. It's the shortest night and the longest day of the year, Grunty, said Uncle. How can we stay awake that long? asked Melanie. I know, said Miffy. We can play games. Let's play Drop the Handkerchief. What a good idea. Everyone joined in. They sat on the ground with their eyes closed. Miffy went first. 
As she walked round the circle, she sang. A tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. Niffy kept walking around the circle. She laid the handkerchief down behind Boris very quietly. Nobody noticed it because they still had their eyes closed. When the song was finished, everybody opened their eyes and looked behind them. Boris, it's you, said Barbara. Now you have to catch Miffy. Boris stood up as fast as he could and chased Miffy. But Miffy was quicker and he couldn't catch her. Miffy sat down in Boris's place. I won, she said. They all laughed. Yes, you won. So, now it's my turn, said Boris. A tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. And so they played for a long time. But it still didn't get dark. I'm getting hungry from all this running, said Grunty. Just then, they heard a strange sound. <coughs> What's that? asked Barbara. Miffy laughed. I think it's Uncle's tummy, she said. <coughs> then it must be time for the birthday dinner said Mother Bunny. I'm sure my tummy will enjoy that, said Uncle. Boris and Uncle built a campfire. Then everybody sat down again to enjoy the meal. It was a delicious birthday dinner. After dinner, Boris began to strum his banjo. The sun was setting and it was nearly dark, but still there were no stars in the sky. Grunty had already fallen asleep. I'm going to stay awake all night, yawned Miffy. Me too, yawned Melanie. But by the time the moon and the stars were in the sky, both of them were also fast asleep. It was the evening of Miffy's birthday, and nearly everybody was asleep. Nothing could be heard except the sound of Poppy snoring, and Boris too. Uncle, Mother and Father Bunny were sitting by the campfire. The stars are beautiful tonight, sighed Uncle. It's too bad that Miffy was too tired to stay awake. Inside their tent, Miffy, Melanie and Grunty were fast asleep. Suddenly, a shadow moved outside the tent, followed by a digging sound close by. It woke Melanie up. Miffy, Grunty, wake up, she whispered. Something's outside the tent. The girls saw a shadow moving around and heard the digging. What is it, Miffy? I'm scared. I don't know, Grunty, said Miffy, but it's trying to get into our tent. Then they heard a soft whining. Snuffy, said Miffy, and there, underneath the tent cloth, Snuffy's head appeared. Snuffy, laughed Miffy. You really scared us. 
Why are we sleeping with all our clothes on? asked Melanie. I thought we were going to stay awake to look at the stars, said Grunty. Yes, but I think that we fell asleep and my parents took us to bed, said Miffy. Let's look at the stars now. Outside they saw Uncle, Mother and Father Bunny still sitting by the campfire. So you're awake, whispered Mother Bunny. Yes, said Miffy. Snuffy woke us up and now we want to look at the stars. They're so beautiful tonight. Indeed they are, said Uncle. And from my plane, I spotted a good place right on top of the next hill. From there, we can watch the stars even better. Follow me. They took two lanterns and followed him. I'm scared in the dark, whispered Grunty. We're with you, Grunty. Come and hold my hand, said Mother Bunny. It's not far. Miffy and Melanie held hands too. It's a bit scary, isn't it? said Melanie. But it's a real adventure, said Miffy. I think Uncle wouldn't take us if it wasn't safe. They had to climb a big hill. That is an observation post, said Uncle. Used to look at the stars. When they finally reached the top, the view was magnificent. They could see stars all around them. Miffy looked through her telescope. She saw stars, the moon, and a shooting star, so she could make a wish. I wish that I could have a birthday every day. <laughs>